I don't think I've ever actually sat down and thought about what my ideal bourbon would look like. So in this episode, we're going to Frankenstein that together with pieces of my favorite bottles. Stay tuned after the break and we'll talk about that. So this past weekend, I was at a bottle share and I got asked the question, where do I get the ideas for some of my videos? So buckle your seatbelt. We're going to talk about how I got to the idea for this video. So this morning I got a text message saying there is the potential for a Weller CYPB drop today on Fine Wine and Good Spirits website. If you're in Pennsylvania, you know my pain. So I sat back, set my browser to auto refresh and started thinking about Weller CYPB itself. So if you don't know, Weller CYPB stands for Craft Your Perfect Bourbon. So ideally, this is a crowdsourced method of figuring out what your perfect bourbon looks like. So there is a website. I will link it in the description if you have never done it. It's a ton of fun. It's a little informative. It'll give you some idea. And I have basically stolen that entire website into the idea for crafting my perfect bourbon or my ideal bourbon. If you look at the website itself, you can kind of pick and choose it gives you some information like you can choose whether you want a ride or a weeded bourbon so it's a little simplistic of a website but it talks about recipe it talks about barrel char it talks about warehouse position and it talks about proof and then at the end it gives you your ideal buffalo trace product although they somehow missed on mine because i would say i'm probably more of a stag person and it gave me eh taylor which has a storied history on this channel even just recently it lost in a blind to Cooper's Craft 100 and Early Times Bottled and Bond. And then it showed up in an episode of Do I Like This? Blind for me. And it was a, I like this. So I'm on the fence about it. It just depends, I guess, on the day. But it is definitely not my favorite Buffalo Trace offering, but it's definitely not bad either. So, so we're going to talk about those four elements, recipe, barrel char, warehousing, and proof. And we're going to kind of Frankenstein that together into my what my ideal bourbon would look like first off we're going to talk about recipe i'm going to refer to it as mash bill from here on out because that is how in my brain i call it a mash bill is by definition for bourbon has to be at least 51 percent corn it can contain any other grains uh mgp runs a mash bill that is 99 percent corn one percent malted barley we're going to start there and we're going to talk about some of my favorite mash bills and kind of the elements that i like out of bourbon so i like a little bit fruity. I like a complexity. I like a good depth of flavor and something that has a nice thick mouthfeel or a thick consistency. It, it's coating your mouth. It's all that kind of stuff. So we're going to start with that portion of the mash bill and something like an Elijah Craig or a Jack Daniels mash bill is going to be more along the lines of what I want there. And that's going to be in the 10 to 12, maybe a little higher, maybe a little bit less percent malted barley. So malted barley is the thing that gives you a lot of your consistency. I use this analogy all the time. Scotch is 100% malted barley and scotches generally feel thick and oily if they're in that 90 to 100 proof range. The proof, I think, kind of cuts down on that mouthfeel at 80 proof or maybe even 86 proof. So... I want something that's a little bit higher on the malted barley content, but I don't want too much malted barley that it starts really affecting the taste like a Starlight where they're running a 20% malted barley. So we're talking like 12% malted barley and I find it easier to go through the pieces and then work my way to the top. So I think something in the, the 8 to 10% rye is where I want to be. I know Jack Daniels runs, I believe it's an 8% rye, 80% corn, 8% rye, 12% malt barley. So I think that's honestly somewhere close to where I would be. And I will say that for the recipe too, the yeast makes a huge difference. So I would use Buffalo Trace's yeast. Buffalo Trace's yeast comes off really fruity and it's across every single one of their mash bills. 
So that's why I've narrowed it down to, I think that's the yeast. It comes off with like a grape or a cherry or an orange marmalade. And I think that's what I want mixed with a Jack Daniels. A lot of brown sugar, a lot of deep flavors and a very thick mouthfeel. And that's what I'm looking for. So I think something along the lines of Jack Daniels is the mash bill that I would use. And then the yeast from Buffalo Trace to bring a little bit more fruitiness to that. So as far as recipe, that's what I'm going with. So then we're gonna talk about barrel char. So generally barrels are in a one, two, four char level. And then I actually learned this in a live stream when we were playing a game of John versus the internet. Apparently anything above char level four is just considered bonus char. There is really only four char levels and they, I guess, vary a little bit between distilleries, but Buffalo Trace considers theirs to be a char level four at 55 seconds charred. So I really love Parker's Heritage. I really enjoy the rye. I have a wheat whiskey. I've had the double barreled and all of them have been fantastic. They all have this real deep like vanilla flavor. And I think that comes from heavily charred barrels. So Buffalo Trace talks about their char level four being 55 seconds. Parker's is reportedly a minute and a half. So you have an extra bonus 50% char to that. And that sounds awesome. So I think I would go with New American Oak, standard size barrel, and a minute and a half char to really bring out some of those heavy vanilla flavors and even some like almost double oaked chocolatey flavors because that's really what I'm looking for to really accentuate that Jack Daniels mash bill with the Buffalo Trace yeast and really add some like some vanilla to that brown sugar and just a lot of sweetness and a little bit of like smoky creme brulee maybe. All of that together sounds fantastic to me. We are taking that then, we're taking this distillate, we're taking this barrel, and we're putting it into a warehouse position. So a warehouse position or warehousing on the Buffalo Trace chart gives you an idea of how these barrels are going to be aged. It has a graphic with three floors on it. These floors are first floor, middle floor, top floor. Bottom floor tends to age more slowly, middle floor ages a little bit more well-rounded and top floor generally has a lot of depth, a lot of big spiky flavors and has generally the highest proof. When it comes to warehousing, I think I want something that is a top floor flavors that come very prominently. And that I think is what I'm looking for. So in that I would take a top floor, like a Koi Hill that's going to mature and give you some of those deep flavors. Now, I actually forgot entirely about the idea of age. So the, the next page past warehousing is age. When we're talking about age, my palate tends to like things that are not overly oaky. So to me, Knob Creek 12 is just on that border of being over oak. For the proof point that I want, and I think that's not going to be a secret to anybody here, I want it to be maybe especially being top floor, being high proof. I want it to be in maybe that eight to 10 year range. I think that's my sweet spot. I do, I absolutely love George T. Stag as a bourbon. It is one of my favorite things and it's fantastic. Always high proof, 15 year age statement, but I would imagine that that is a lower floor thing. However, generally, right, across all the bourbons that I've had, generally things that are higher floor stand out to me more. And I think that's more where I'm looking for this. So in order to have a high floor and a high proof, I want to be in that eight to 10 year range. I think anything over that is probably going to end up being over oaked, especially with the heavy char barrel. Parker's, I think 10 years, 13 felony double oaked is eight years. Stag is supposedly anywhere between eight and nine years. So I think that eight to 10 year window is exactly what I want out of my bourbon. Finally, Proof. So I kind of talked about this. I think my sweet spot for proof, especially in a lot of bourbons, more recently, Stag 22A was one of my favorites that I've had in a long time. Elijah Craig Bale Proof, C923, 13th Colony Double Oaked, Batch 2. And what do those three bourbons have in common? They are 130 proof plus. So I think maybe that 133, 135 proof range is ideally where my perfect bourbon is. That's just for me. I know to some people it can be hot. I don't drink every day, so I'm not necessarily as worried about a daily driver or having to worry about something blowing my palate out. But the, the peak for my enjoyment is around that 130 to 130. Seven, six, whatever, 136.8 range. So that is what I want proof wise out of my bourbon. So all in all, that is what I'm looking for out of bourbon. I think that's really what my palate leans towards. 
and it's been a fun kind of Frankenstein idea for how to make this. Maybe someday I'll work on blending this together into something that would be my perfect bourbon. But for now, this is my idea of an ideal bourbon. I would love to hear what you guys think about these five things. There's definitely five, not four. Your recipe or mash bill, your barrel char level, your warehousing, your age and your proof. And even if you wanna do it by bottles, right? If you wanna do it by what the bottles themselves are, we can talk about that. If you wanna take the Buffalo Trace quiz, take that down below, but definitely drop your comments. Let me know what your ideal bourbon looks like and we'll talk about it. It'll be a great conversation. I'm looking forward to hearing from you guys. If you wanna suggest content for the future, drop that in the comments. I know I've had a few comments in the recent months that I'm trying to figure out how I wanna make happen. So stay tuned for those, but I will definitely attempt do my best to make that possible. If you like this content, check out our other videos. Please like and comment on this video and subscribe if you haven't already. It helps us out a ton. And we hope you'll join us in drinking like a gentleman. Cheers. I think I would take a top floor like a Koi Hill kind of offering is exactly what I'm looking for there. So I want something that's going to mature and it's going to mature, I didn't even mention age up to this point.